Thank you for joining us once again here live from Victoria Falls where we're just having some co with the players, partners, sponsors and the hosting countries and also the organizers of this uh, successful ACD fourth session in Victoria Falls. Joining with us today, we are so much honored to have uh, Professor Temba Charles Basopomoy, who is also the Dean at IT, who is also the, the Dean uh, IT MC at uh, Zimbabwe Open University. Professor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I, of, 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 of quite uh, so much interest, uh, I, I noted during your presentation yesterday, you were speaking of uh, uh, how the open distance learning uh, institutions are also embracing technology to, to as, a, as a very important critical facet of, uh, of, of distance learning education. Uh, in, in your own ways, how is open uh, learning, distance open learning, managed to embrace technology where we are also here in Zimbabwe? What, 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 what do we really need to do in as far as embracing uh, technology as a fundamental tool to enhance our education? Well, the, the good thing about it is that the good thing about what ODL, which is open distance learning uh, in Zimbabwe, especially when you look at where we are right now, the good thing about it is that we are at a fairly advanced stage compared to other African countries, for example. Uh, perhaps uh, we are competitive enough to say that even in some of those areas where, in some of those places around the world where you have advanced systems in distance education, uh, we are pretty competitive. We have now reached a situation where we are going to be at least our plan is to make sure that we are going to be using the latest uh, technologies in the delivery of uh, OD, ODL. Uh, and part of that also is what we consider to be the latest in terms of uh, the innovations in technology such as what's referred to as MOOCs, which is uh, massive uh, open online uh, courses uh, which will allow students anywhere throughout Zimbabwe and within the region to be able to access courses that we offer uh, uh, at, at our institutions. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that this is something that we'll be able to do, to, to do throughout the 10 provinces of, 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 of Zimbabwe, as well as within the region. Mm. I, I understand the, the, the whole MOOCs concept in as far as Zimbabwe and Africa is concerned. This, this is a bit of a, of a new uh, method, um, method of learning. Also, it, it has been uh, running in, in other countries. How feasible is this going to be, especially well, with a uh, Zimbabwean perspective where we have limitations of infrastructure, limitations of access to technological devices? I think, uh, on average, uh, uh, what, what you're going to find that with MOOCs and most of these te uh, uh, technology-driven strategies or delivery systems, is something very simple. If I can find myself on here, this is what is going to be part of what is you know what, what everyone is expected to get out of uh, uh, learning distance using distance education. It's called learning, meaning uh, uh, mobile learning, or sometimes they call it e-learning or electronic learning. Meaning, on, on average, what's going to happen is that as long as you have your cell phone you'll be able to access any interactive situation that enables you to get uh, instructional materials. Uh, it, pretty much as much as you access your cell phone on, your phone, on Facebook, you go on, you log, you log on to your Facebook account, you communicate with your friends, you, you download information that is uh, multimedia information that involves text, uh, pictures, uh, you name it, uh, whether it's multi multimedia uh, 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 digital technologies that are hooked up to your system or peripherals that are hooked up, hooked up to your system, this is what's going to get you some when it comes to basically being able to be what we call a, uh, uh, a technologically driven student. This is, this, yeah, that, that's where we're going. And for your own information, people don't understand this. On average, the people uh, that uh, uh, in Africa we have a disproportional advantage when it comes to 
mobile uh, 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 when it comes to mobile access. Almost everyone that you see today, when I, if I go outside out there, what, what you're going to find out is that you know almost everyone has a mobile phone, <laughs> and it's not the same thing with uh, uh, other countries. And when I'm saying mobile phone, by the way, I'm talking about a smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, and on average, you, you, you are looking at people who really know how to use a smartphone, meaning being able to go on to um, go online, be able to access information, be able to process information be able to even go back and, uh, and, 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 and f give it in the, in the form of feedback to either their friends or relatives or whatever the case may be. That's what mobile learning is all about, mm. basically. And that's where we are going. Mm. And so we, we, actually, uh, we actually are, fully, are going along those lines where uh, we are strategizing along the lines where we are going to, what we want to have is a situation where individuals are able to access uh, courses online uh, which are obviously digitized and they are going to be within the framework of their mobile, mobile learning systems. Maybe we can study 1G before we even go to as much as any, 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 any uh, uh, serious you know, bandwidth such as 5 or 6 or whatever it is. Okay. Right. So in other words, I think what we are saying here, the, the, these just passive devices that are going to, to be good enough to just to do it. The basic job for connectivity and absolutely. What we what we want to have is a situation where uh, the average Zimbabwean, the average uh, uh, the average person who wants to access education within Zimbabwe, and they want to do it on they want to do it they can do it online. Mm -hmm. And what we are going to be going through is a situation where we are going to look at uh, you know training individuals online. Uh, using hyper uh, hyperactive uh, 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 instructional you know system. That's basically what we're doing. Mm. It's, it's been done all over the world, by the way. You, were, you know, in a, in a lot of in a lot of countries, it's being done. It's being done in the states. If you look at, for example, uh, Walden University is doing that in the states. Uh, if you're looking at uh, 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 a whole bunch of other countries, they're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. During the exchange group uh, that, 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 that you, you also contributed yesterday, well, I just wanted to know what is the general consensus as far as the African continent is concerned with the MOOCs? Uh, are, are, are all African countries really ready to embrace MOOCs? Are they taking it up or is probably a Zimbabwe thing? How is it like? Uh, MOOCs, let me, let me just say something. Okay. MOOCs, MOOCs generally tend to be, what, what we are looking at with MOOCs here, MOOCs are free access. Courses on average, they are free access courses. It's not easy to you have to compile a whole bunch of free access courses. But what we have, or what we are doing uh, in, 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 in so is that we still have uh, courses that are being downloaded by other people online. Okay, and we still uh, we still have courses that are being uh, copied from uh, which are hard copy course, courses. That's part of working. Mooking can be from the basic level to a high level mooking, mooking environment, which is, for example, you can mook you know, on textbooks or you can mook using high, hyper, hyper, hyperactive um, uh, uh, delivery systems, which allows you to, for example, use uh, all types of digital interactions that you can think of. But what we are doing right now what, and what we aim to do within Africa is to make sure that at least ODL is going to be recognized from the same perspective that traditional delivery systems are, 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 are recognized. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we're looking at. Okay. Of, of, of interest, say also, though, maybe just before we close down this interview, is uh, we also hear that your, your institution, the Zimbabwe Open of University, is going to be introducing uh, degree programs as far as IT certification is concerned, probably if you can shed more light on that. Yes, we, we are actually be, uh, beginning January 1st of uh, 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 2015. Okay. Uh, we, what we are going to be doing is introducing courses, four degree courses. We are going to start with two, course, two degree courses. The first degree course is going to be a Bachelor of uh, information technology, there will be a, another degree course which will be a Bachelor of so Software Engineering. Uh, those will be introduced on the 1st of January, which is the coming year. 
Uh, those courses will be degree courses, which will be four-year degree courses, by, 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 uh, 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 meaning that you know, when someone is done with those courses, they are able to actually work within the, 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 the professional infrastructure that they are qualified to, to work on. And then uh, we also have another, an additional two degree courses that we intend to introduce within the next four years, which will be the Bachelor of uh, uh, Networking and also a Bachelor of Multimedia Systems. Okay. And, and again, the, the idea is to make sure that we have individuals who are able to use these degrees or use these technologies or use these skills within the peripheral uh, uh, professional environments of our own country. Mm -hmm. uh, and all, not only that, you know, also our contribution towards the SADC region. And of course, the most important thing, which is uh, contributing towards uh, the Zimbabwe uh, uh, effort in terms of making sure that uh, 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 our, our, our professionals are, are trained. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we're doing. Okay. The, 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 there's been a, a problem of uh, uh, perception as far as uh, open business learning is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, Professor. Well, what, 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 what do you think also most people, they, they, they tend to look down on these uh, certification as far as the open learning is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, vis a vis to the brick and mortar system? Well, <laughs> Well, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way, and uh, maybe this will give it, uh, some kind of a, a succinct ex example. I came out of a group from what we might call a traditional university system. Uh, and I'm very proud of the fact that I came, to, came out of that system, but I have had the opportunity over the past 40 years of my life in academia in terms of research and development I've, I've had the opportunity to, to look at both sides of the, of the, of the spectrum. I do, not, I do not find that much of a difference, especially if one goes through a rigorous course, a well-designed and developed and evaluated course, uh, a, a course that is pertinent to what the person is supposed to be doing. I've had, there have been situations where, oh, by the way, I've taken courses uh, in open distance learning, even as a professional or even as an individual who has been actually uh, training other individuals to take courses in, in ODL. If a course is well designed, is well developed, and is well evaluated, I'm not going to worry about that situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I know that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Think maybe I, think, I think the perception, if you talk about perception, perceptions are, are based, usually perception, perceptions are like someone being a racist or someone being a tribalist or whatever the case may be. It's usually, a perception is based on ignorance. If you knew, if one knows what ODL is supposed to be all about, the peripherals of ODL, what an ODL can offer or cannot offer, or what the traditional system can offer and cannot offer, one would be able to say, you know what, you know, actually, when I'm looking at that situation, it's not that bad. This is why I'm saying that I, I've had a situation where... But how does, the, how does, the, corporate, how does the corporate in Zimbabwe uh, treat a, 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 a student with a, with a qualification from, from this? Do you have any problems with the corporate world? Without the truth, certification from from all the audios. I'll, I'll, I'll say here, here's what I'm, here's my challenge mm -hmm. because you know I've done this before. I've set up programs before which are designed to teach people technologically or at least uh, be, uh, to be able to use IT or IT in, in related uh, uh, training environments within their own uh, system. I've done that on in, in, in two different institutions overseas. And all of them have been extremely successful. What, I, what I'm going to say is this. I would like to have a situation where someone who is coming from a traditional university or from a conventional university challenging my students who I'm, I'm expecting to graduate four years after January the 1st, challenging them in terms of their capability, in terms of their delivery, in terms of their skills, in terms of, in terms of their aptitudes, or whatever else can come after that. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm willing to bet. Okay, right. so so confident over that. Probably just before we wind down the scene, I guess they the last words to our viewers. 
Uh, well, first of all, your your te your technology, for example, this screen that you are you are you are, you are showing, mm -hmm. is a very good illustration of how ODL can work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would be having I would have I would be having a lecture, for example, think about a situation where I'm having a lecture and I'm having a PowerPoint presentation or I'm having any type of a, an instructional delivery system within this environment that you are using right now. And it's live, and imagine it being not just within Zimbabwe, but throughout this region or throughout this, this, this whole world. As a matter of fact, my son was my son in New York was telling me yesterday, he said, Dad, I'm, you know, I really enjoyed, you know, looking at your, you know, your, your conference online. Oh. That's what I want to see. Wow. And that's exactly what ODEA can do. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between that and you being in a classroom environment? Okay. More so, if you're in a classroom environment, you're confined. Mm -hmm. In an ODEA situation, you are mobile. You could be doing this while you're actually, at, you know, in the gym, you're actually, you know, exercising, and guess what? You are actually learning something or you are going through a lesson. You see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So this this is a clear example, a clear illustration of uh, of, of, of of what ODL is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Professor Temba Charles Pasopomoyo, Dean of ITMC at the Zimbabwe Open University. Thank you so much for taking your time to join thank us. Thank you, it's my and pleasure. To you also, our viewers, thank you so much for taking your time to watch www.technomeg.co.zw. This is the place to be as far as technology is concerned. They should be watching. All right, thank you so much for your time. Great.